So here I am outside a service center at a uh, GMC kind of Kia combo dealer. And I wanted to talk about something that's been bugging me for a little bit. So the automotive technician industry is seeing massive amounts of people quitting and there's huge vacancies and I want to get into why. So there are a ton of surveys out there and, and I'll quote some and I'll put them up on the screen, but what uh, the recent one, when they polled over 3,000 automotive technicians, over 88% of them have thought about or plan to quit. And the top three reasons why is uh, inconsistent and unfair pay structures, which we will get into. Number two is hostile work environment. We'll also get into that. And then number three, they don't really see any career path or career trajectory. And there's failures on multiple fronts here, but I can start off with the first one. So why am I able to speak on this? Well, I actually worked as an automotive technician quite a long time ago. It was back in like 2004, five and six off and on. I was paid hourly, which is kind of rare, but what they did is I was paid hourly, but not my full wage. So if I didn't meet X number of sales or, or do whatever number of service, I only got like 60% of my wage. So I was supposed to be being paid eight, $11 and 50 cents. And oftentimes on my paycheck, I would only be getting paid $8 and 50 cents. And I had to go above and beyond to about a 125% uh, work ratio in order to get my full wage. And that's still a practice today. It's, it's pretty wild. So the main uh, way to pay folks in this industry is what you're referred to as flat rate. And what flat rate is, is you are uh, given a certain number of hours per job. So say you have uh, one of these little Buicks here, Buick Encore, and they say you have uh, two hours to redo the brake pads and you are billed at a flat rate of $25 an hour. It does not matter if that took you three hours or 30 minutes, you're gonna get paid two hours for that job. And that is kind of the standard across the industry. That is the most common pay method. And a lot of folks don't like that because what does that do? It, it incentivizes shady behavior. Um, it doesn't really promote training or anything like that because these these folks are you know they don't have any guarantees on their paychecks right they are worried about being able to pay their bills so they're doing whatever they can to upsell everybody and get more and more and more money and then of course you know the dealerships if there's no work they don't have to pay you i mean that's the best case scenario for them right you know they're either making a ton of money that you're bringing in and, and upselling everybody on it, or they're not paying you at all. And that is just kind of wild that that's still a practice today. So a lot of people just don't want to deal with that. You know, imagine one week your paycheck is a thousand dollars and then another week it's four thousand dollars. And then the other week is $500. So what did I do to kind of investigate this a little further? I contacted uh, General Motors dealerships in areas that I lived in. So I know the cost of living of these places. And I asked them, hey, you know, my kid's thinking about going to school and getting her ACE certification and and becoming an automotive technician. And what I wanna know is, is she gonna be able to make a living or not? How much are you going to pay a new grad or somebody who has like two or less years experience? The answer was 
Uh, in Minnesota, it was $24 an hour. In North Carolina, it was $25 an hour at one dealership, $20 an hour at another dealership. In California, uh, they were the best paid, so I called them and they said that there was some weird rule where they had to pay twice of the minimum wage, so the average uh, starting salary that they would bring somebody on with was about $31 an hour. In Hawaii is the most tragic one, so they said 25 bucks an hour, despite uh, Hawaii being 89% more expensive than the national average. So do not become an automotive mechanic in Hawaii. And one of the other things that people aren't taking into account is the actual cost of being an auto mechanic. It's not as low as one would think you have to pay for schooling often cases and some of the most common avenues are those sort of national schools that you see commercials on and so i investigated one called a uti i think that i would change uh, my name if it was uti but they did not and i discovered that if you go through a bunch of other certs and things like that, you can rack up a bill at that place of over $47,000 to become an automotive technician and end up making, you know, 20 to $25 an hour. So how are you supposed to pay back a debt like that? And one other thing is, is automotive technicians are generally required to have some tools or they're going to definitely want to have some tools and the average starter kit is roughly six to seven thousand dollars and so you're gonna be potentially in somewhere of you know twenty to fifty thousand dollars in debt so i think that if this industry wants to kind of catch up and and keep uh, moving forward and actually turn into a place that people want to work I, I do feel like there needs to be some kind of reforms and stuff, but it's not that easy, right? Like there's a lot of insurance, there's a lot of overhead, there's parts increasing and stuff like that. So it's not just, you know, the owners of these shops and these dealerships being like villains. It is a myriad of other things, right? And one, one big factor is, is people never talk about this, but for like 20 years now, nobody has promoted trades. And they were like, no, you need to go get a, a liberal arts degree and listen to some ponytailed asshole talk about how everyone's a victim, right? So we need to kind of kill that. When I was working in this industry, I saw like just endless shady stuff on a daily basis, man. It was absolutely ridiculous. Like the things that I would see people do they would recommend like an alignment uh, on a car that just had an alignment, you know, 5,000 miles back. They would literally not change air filters and just throw them in the trash and bill those hours. They'd say that they did, you know, a brake service or, or bled the brakes and they just wouldn't do anything. And it was all to get more and more and more money because they were like feeling like they're in some type of starvation mode right and i think that you know yeah do you want to incentivize people to work harder sure but i i think that when you create an environment that promotes sort of shystiness and and shady behavior you're gonna get a bad product at the end in this industry i think like 75 or 80 percent of of people who work into it say that they feel like it has a terrible uh, public perception and it does i don't think that everybody wants to start fixing their own cars and i really hope that people fill vacancies if there's even remotely close to what they're saying 640,000 vacancies i hope that they start to fill these you know, people need jobs, but, you know, dealerships and shops and stuff kind of have to wake up and go, hey, people need a, a livable wage. 
and you need to kind of plan accordingly to attract good folks. Are there opportunities in this field? Absolutely. You know, are people, uh, do they make money hand over fist as uh, auto techs and mechanics? Sure, a ton of them do. But I would say that the vast majority are struggling. And the folks that end up quitting are the people that have like less than five years in. So just imagine you've invested $50,000 and you got tools and all this other stuff and you've not made anything more than, you know, 20, 25 bucks an hour maybe. And now you quit after five years and you're gonna go start over somewhere else, work in HVAC or, or, you know, working on an assembly line at a factory or something like that. I know a guy who left the industry after 15 years and he's running in advanced auto parts and he told me, I'm making more money with a lot less stress and I'm not destroying my body to run this advanced auto parts store and I get to help people out all day and not rip them off. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I don't want to dissuade people from this industry. I do think that there's opportunities. There's a lot of resources out there, things like Wrenchway. Those folks are doing a lot of great work trying to promote this. And you can, you can carve out a living, right? But you need to not have these rose-colored lenses on. But if you work hard and you do good at your job, you can succeed in anything. And I think that that is something that uh, we really need to look hard in the mirror. And go, hey, am I cut out for this? Thanks for watching. We'll see you.